Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard in Bobby's Comet, Chapter One. Can you still see the meteor? Yes, Fina. And it's drawing nearer and nearer. You already have a comet named after you, Professor. So this one's mine. You promised. Bobby's Comet. Maybe it's as big as the world. Maybe bigger. Maybe Bobby, it's... Bobby, just now it's very small, but very menacing. In moments now, it will strike the Earth. We can watch it fall on physiograph. Let's hope it doesn't fall too close. trick if my comet landed on top of us. There's no sound to a comet or a meteor. I'm going to get a closer view of the telescope. What is your latest observation of the meteor approaching Earth? It isn't a meteor, it's a rocket, a man-made weapon. One moment, please. Marshal, our latest tabulation, quickly. Position now, celestial meridian, 87 degrees. Parallel, 233 degrees. Moment of contact with Earth, checked. Rechecked and is now absolute. 15, 10, plus 30. Professor Newton, who's shooting at us? I don't know, Bobby. No one knows. Forty-five seconds to go, sir. Twenty seconds, sir. That's two degrees, point five north of here. Why, it's headed right for the Newton Observatory, where the professor is. There's seven seconds more, sir. <laughs> professor Newton, Dina and Bobby. Professor Newton, answer. Are you all right? A meteor is playing tag with us. But we're okay, Mr. Secretary. Yes. Luckily, the weapon just missed the mountaintop here where we are. But I'm afraid it hit the Internation Airport. We'll drive over immediately and see. I'll report to you from there.
secretary. Yes, Professor. Did you find where it landed? Just as I said, the airport. It barely missed the landing strip. Fortunately, no one was hurt. I'll order equipment to lower me into the crater. I only hope there's enough of the weapon left so I can find out something about it. We've got to somehow, but take no unnecessary chances. Be careful, Professor. We're lucky, Marshal. If this is the start of a bombardment of Earth, their first shot was wasted. Where's Rocky Jones? That's Rocky in his orbit jet, sir. Rocky isn't convinced that Griff is dead, so he's patrolling the Asiatic region to be on the lookout. Right. Hey, Winky. The astrophone's running over. Get on. Office of Space Affairs to XV-2. Calling Space Ranger Rocky Jones. This is the XV-2 to Office of Space Affairs. This is Rocky Jones. Cancel your patrol, Rocky. Report back immediately. Yes, sir. We should make it by 0214. Over and out. You know what? You backtracked into our sound wash and woke me up. Well, maybe Secretary Drake will give you office duty at our Tibet Observatory. Forty below zero. That's fine, sleeping with it. Oh, no, no. Anything but that. I'll stay awake. What in the name of space? What is it? What was it? Now these, these are the fragments I was able to dig from the crater. The entire missile, its shell, its mechanism, was built of this crystal-like material, which I would call a poor substitute for our alloys. Poor substitute, Professor. Well, for anything at all to remain after such an impact, I think, is remarkable, especially after the great distance it traveled. Phenomenal power, Rocky. Yes. We on Earth, with all our ego, we're far behind whoever built this missile. Well, what about atomic energy, Professor? Oh, they probably had that long before we did. Oh, Marshal, have you been able to contact our Tibet station? Haven't they answered yet? Sorry, sir, they haven't replied to my signals. I'll keep on trying. I can say this, however, that basically the power used to project their strange weapon is developed by friction. For example, rub two pieces of crystal together and intense heat and energy are generated. Ow! Careful, Bobby. That's powerful material. That's right, Bobby. Now, Vina, what are your conclusions in this matter? Well, sir, I can show you on the map. By backtracking, the constant arc of the orbit, since you first saw the missile, it could only have come from here, Jupiter's moon. Fornax? Well, I can hardly believe it. Professor, that moon was so hot it was used to coin our word furnace. Why, Fornax glitters with a white heat so intense, nothing could possibly live there. Ah, oh, nothing, perhaps, but crystal. And crystal grows in such intense heat, and growth is life. We've always believed that there could be no life on Fornax, but a true scientist never believes anything until it's proven. Professor, you've heard the saying, seeing is believing. Of course, but Rocky, you don't mean that... Exactly. We'll see for ourselves. You're a brave lad, Rocky. It will be a dangerous mission. But, oh, what an exciting and worthwhile adventure. Professor Newton believes they need our ores and alloys for metal, just as we would like to learn about their great wealth of energy. Well, what do you think, Rocky? Can we make it? It'll be a rough hop, Winky. From right here to right there. 
And we'll be out of the traffic area all the way. Mm-hmm. Well, where's our refueling station? Winky. Right here to right there. Oh. You mean if we're lucky? Stand by for report to headquarters. Mr. Secretary, we've made contact with the Tibet Observatory. Secretary of Space Drake asking information on missile which crashed in your area. Approximate time, 1300. I saw it land, Mr. Secretary, and dispatched the rangers stationed here to investigate. Regardless of what they find, you are to report simply that a meteor fell. I don't want the real story to leak out. What is the real story, Mr. Secretary? Two missiles with fantastic power have been projected to Earth from Fornax. Fornax? Professor Newton is certain that the planet is rich in an energy greater than atomic. Brief your rangers when they return. This information is not to be made public until Rocky returns from an explorative flight and we can stake a claim. Very well, sir. Now, don't interfere in this, Griff. You haven't got a chance. So Fornax is a rich prize, eh? And Rocky's going to stake a claim for Drake. Well... Sorry, Rocky, you won't get to Fornax first. In fact, you won't get there at all. If we can blast off by 0730, planetary positions will be at the best. Uh, Rocky, I've been nailed to desk duty long enough. May I make the hop? I wish you could, Marshal, but Professor Newton must go to handle the scientific end. Vina will assist him and relieve Winky as navigator. That's my crew. Maybe next trip. Rocky! What about me? Uh, not this trip, Bobby. But Rocky, I'm getting to be a real big guy. I'm growing and putting on weight every day. Gosh, and my muscles are... Sorry, Bobby. It's a long hop. We have to conserve all space and weight. Uh, I was only kidding, Rocky. You know I'm just a little fella. Gosh, I hardly weigh anything. Really, I'm anemic. Bobby is more valuable to me than his weight in instruments. Crew members, prepare for blast off. Bobby, get to work. Roaring rockets? You mean I can go along? That's what I said. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stripped of all weapons except the bow missiles, Mr. Secretary. I'm sorry it had to be done. But with the full capacity load of fuel, you're still on the danger mark of a successful blast off. Well, sir, what good are weapons? If the folks on Fornax want to fight and they have as much power as the professor says, then anything we'd have would look like so many pea shooters. Quite right, Winky. Ship ready for blast off, sir. The ground crew is ready too, Rocky. The propulsion necessary to get you off Earth is 20 tons against a power setting of eight. The acceleration thrust will be G4.6. Shall I alert the blast off synchronizer, sir? I'll do it, Winky. Take positions. Ovina. I know what you're going to say, Rocky. With an acceleration of G4.6, there will be a shock which will cause us to black out. Don't worry, Rocky. Professor Bobby and I are up to it. We'll be the best crew you've ever had. Thank you, Vina. Switch on blast off synchronizer. Happy landing on Fornax, Rocky. My main worries will be over when you're safely in space. You're loaded with fuel to the limit. We'll make it, sir.
Pleasant dreams back there. I sure hope the robot control keeps the ship on course until Rocky returns to consciousness. I'm sure it will, Marshal. Crash dive. Rocky! Rocky, can you hear me? Rocky! Come in, Rocky! Rocky! Pull out of your dive! Are successful. Ship under manual control. Out. Gosh, what happened? You must have come to and then blacked out again. Golly, Rocky, I. Go tell the crew the blast off was super stellar. for next, Rocky, in case there are no landing facilities. Or do we face that problem when we come to it? No, Vino. If the professor is right, and he usually is, won't find the necessary steel for a blast-off cradle, so our best bet is to attempt a landing on the tail section. Then we'll be ready for return flight. Sir, radar scope shows the reflection of a spaceship in the vicinity. State our flight license. Ask for identification. XV-2 on license flight 4, 540. Please come in and give flight license. XV-2 to unidentified spaceship. Please give flight license. XV-2 to unidentified spaceship. We haven't got a license, Rocky. But you'll find out who it is soon enough. Griff, huh? Right. Take your battle stations. Load missiles in forward tube. Okay, Rocky. But that won't much more than scratch the paint of that ship. I know. Our only chance is to climb up into the rocket wars and score a direct hit in the tubes. That's going to be awful hot work and awful good shooting. Switch on the grin. Look. Call the crew forward, Mikey. As you know, we left with just enough fuel to get us to Fornax and return. We didn't anticipate the incident while blasting off, and well, now this brush with Griff has used our small fuel reserve. 
Now, we have three choices. The first, we return to Earth and refuel. You won't get my vote on that, Rocky. Nor mine. The second is to change course, head for the RV-5 space station, refuel, and continue on our way. That should get us to Fornax and back to Earth. Yes, but Rocky, we, we can't risk taking the extra time. Think what could happen if, uh, if a third missile crashes Earth. What's your third plan, Rocky? Without further incident, we can probably make Fornax, but then we gamble. Does that moon really have life? And if so, can its inhabitants supply the power to get us back to Earth? You know how we're voting, Rocky. That goes for all of us, Rock. And see, even the orbit jet agrees. Oh. Can't get her an inch off course. Hey, Winky, you see what I see? Well, rattle my rocket reflexes. Crew forward. Fornax, dead ahead. Mighty meteor. It's terrific. But sort of creepy, too. How many times have I watched and studied Jupiter's moon in the telescope? And now, now I'm going to land on it. Part of that moon looks like millions of diamonds. That starts to confirm your theory, Professor Newton. Prepare for landing. Take positions and check each other's safety harness. These instruments must be daffy. We're accelerating at 28 miles per second. Gravitational pulse terrific on us. I, it's twice that on Earth. Stand by to erect an uncased gyro. Standing by, sir. Erect and stabilize. Erect and stabilize. Give me a 90 degree error signal in the gyro. Signal in, sir. Hang on. We're turning ship. Set power, counteract gravitational pull. Counteraction power on, sir. Give me 3G boost, Winky. 3Gs. Give me an altitude count down. 65,000. 55,000. Forty-five thousand. Close power. Give me more, Winky. More, more. Full power, Winky. Come on, get it. Full power on, Rocky, but we can't keep this up. Put on an emergency tank. We're already on it. Sparkling Stardust, Skipper. I never thought we'd make it. End of the line, folks. Step right up for your first look at Fornax. Now, now, folks, don't cry. There's plenty of room for one and all. Amazing. This means there is life, some kind of life here. Yeah, but what kind? Same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Rangers. <laughs>